First thing I want to ask about traveling, besides just the locations, is there any trend that you've noticed, like a certain setup in a city where hauntings are occur? Like, for example, I've heard that when a certain type of rock is around yes. more, then you get more activity because uh, it, it, it has a tendency to record energy and things like that. Now, are certain when you when you travel around, do you start to see patterns? Like this haunt, this this haunted location, this haunted location, this haunted location. Here's a pattern in it. Uh, you, like even going throughout the world, like you guys do. Um, to be completely honest with you, I haven't seen a pattern. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we've been anywhere. We've been all around the world. I mean, we've covered every corner now. I mean, but I mean, from places like um, I want to say like Prague. Okay, Prague is this beautiful city. You know, just really old. Has so much history behind it, and that's where we experienced that supposedly demonic thing or whatever was there. Um, in other places like uh, Italy. Italy, that's also, it's got so much history. I mean, we stayed, we slept in this castle that was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years old. And, um, but I mean, from uh, from Ireland to Italy to, you know, all these different places around the world that I've been to, um, I honestly have not seen a pattern because, you know, we'll have one case and it'll be, like, we'll get so much activity and then we'll have another case and it'll be completely dead. Nothing. And it, it always, like, it's so crazy because it always seems to mix itself up. Like, we go to one country and have two cases, and one is awesome, and one there's nothing. And then we'll go to the next country, and one's awesome, and one there's nothing. And honestly, that's the pattern, that's the only pattern that I see, because it's, it all depends on location, I guess, and what happens there. Right. Well, where, where have some of your most favorite locations been this, so far? Okay. Um, well, there's actually, there's actually one place I just got back to, but that was the one from here for a while, so I don't know. You could talk about how, you know, I'll just say, okay, if it's your I got favorite, it. you know. I got it. Um, Location-wise, and like, like setting and, and people and all that stuff, um, my number one has been Ireland. That's the first place I went to, and Ireland is beautiful. It's, it's a gorgeous place. And so, tell me about the equipment. Okay. What's, what's your favorite type of equipment to use? Because I know I've seen the EMF detector, um, of course the digital yes. recorders, DVRs. Uh, um. We have a lot of new stuff. So I want to hear about it. Okay. Um, as for as for DVR equipment and our cameras that we set up around the location, um, Barry has actually brought in a couple of new cameras. One is the Little Lux camera, and the other is a full spectrum camera. I mean, well, it's a newer full spectrum camera. We also have a couple of full spectrum still cameras where you take, you know, still snapshots. And pretty much what it um, what it allows you to do is see um, on different um, levels of, like, you know, light and stuff that we can't see with our own eyes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's really really cool. I don't know much about the equipment. I just hear what Barry talks about and like what he tells me. But um, I'm definitely learning a lot more about it because I've I've taken um, the DVR and taking the DVR quite a bit and uh, back to my room. And you have an interest in film too, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. I do. Um, we've got a lot of friends who went to film school right here in Savannah and SCAD. Yeah. So, um, I mean, not only that, and then just working in the film industry and stuff and learning what our camera guys do and how they operate. It's just really interesting because they work so hard. And, I mean, a lot of people don't understand, but, like, seriously, our crew works so hard. And, like, they... I mean, obviously, we both make the show together, but they seriously, they make things work. But, um, I mean, with Barry telling me about this new film, we actually, um, Paul, he's the newest member of the team, um, he brought in uh, a thing called the Melmeter, which is uh, pretty much it, uh, how exactly can I explain it? It detects um, anything from, like, temperature fluctuations to um, EMF fields or EMF spikes, um, anything like that. It, it's like, seriously, it's, it's a white box, and, and it even has a flashlight built in. It's like all in one, and you just kind of carry it around, and you just set it there, and it, it's like, seriously, like a personal thing. It's like an EMF sector, and you can press different buttons. It's really cool. I like to carry that around now. Is there, see, with all the equipment, is there any times when you kind of revert back to the old school uh, methods of mm -hmm. investigation, and that's actually worked better than the 
you know, high tech equipment. Do you have some examples? Oh, oh yes, like um, you know your basic. I mean, we've actually Brandy and Rob have actually brought in a couple of new um, audio recorders, which are freaking amazing audio recorders. The one Brandy just brought in. Um, I mean, just the I don't know. It's like it's seriously like a beast. It's huge, and you just set it down. But um, other than that, sorry, I'm getting on subject. But um, uh, going back to the old school days, you know, whenever you just had your mini DV, your little handheld mm -hmm. camera, and an audio recorder, and you don't have any DVR camera set up, you just basically go in there and you're straight up investigating as if, you know, you just say you don't have anything. I mean, we have caught so many EVPs doing stuff that way. I mean, we've had DVR cameras set up. But just going in with basically just, just a, a, an audio recorder and a handheld mm -hmm. mini DV go in there and you get most of our evidence comes from EVPs and that's why people like to say we get we're picking up on radio frequencies and stuff but some of these places we go to is like seriously in the middle of nowhere yeah I mean we are in the, we have no cell phone service no internet or anything for close to a month at a time because we're gone for a month at a time and I mean that's but but as you say you know reverting back to old school days and investigating that way I'm not going to say it's better or it's not but most of our evidence is EVPs. I mean, it comes from, you know, Do you guys do any of that, like, superstitious techniques, like dousing rods or, or automatic riding or anything like that? Absolutely Definitely not. something that ghost hunters would not do? Absolutely not, no. I mean... I didn't figure. I'm sure, you know, people... We've exper experimented, like, on our own time with, like, dousing rods and stuff. Now, I'm not sure exactly what they did before my time with GHI or GH. Um, so I'm not speaking for anyone, but I know for a fact since I've been with them, we don't do anything.